In this lesson, we'll explore how to communicate with ChatGPT using its API and delve into various resources. The Chat Completions API provided by OpenAI enables us to send prompts to ChatGPT and receive responses. It enables us to have multi-turn conversations with ChatGPT. An example API call for chat completions involve two main parameters, the model and messages. The model parameter refers to the language model we want to use, such as GPT 3.5 or GPT 4, each with different context lengths. For our demonstration, we'll use the cost-effective GPT 3.5 model. So let me go ahead and give that as a specification. So the model parameter has been defined. The second parameter, which is messages, stores all the interactions with ChatGPT. It contains the list of input prompts and corresponding output responses in JSON format and each messages has two properties. Role, which can take value either system or user or assistant, and the content, which contains the message which was assigned to the role. So let's understand the roles of ChatGPT. Now user role represents the input prompt or the query of the user. For instance, if the user wants to ask ChatGPT for a joke, we assign the prompt, tell me a joke as the content and user as the role. Now we pass this message and the model to the chat completions API, retrieve the response and print it. So let me go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and print the response which we have got. So as you can see, it has told me a joke, which is why don't scientists trust atoms because they make up everything. So that's how you get a response from a chat GPT model. Now, as you can also see that the response is returned in a JSON format, which is clear over here. And that is why we needed the print statement. The JSON format also includes things like ID, object, the model used, the usage, along with the exact number of tokens which were used so that we have an idea about the cost which is getting incurred. The answer to the exact question can be found in the content area. Now, if you notice carefully, you can clearly see that the output provided by the chat GPT takes on the role assistant. So assistant role is defined for the response given by the chat GPT. So coming to the next role, the system role allows you to provide system level instruction, guiding your model's behavior throughout the conversation. For example, you can say the system role that you are an assistant that speaks like Shakespeare that will insist the chat GPT to give a response like Shakespeare. Let's create the message with both system and user roles and see the response. So here was the message. Let's see the response. And now I'll go ahead and print it. So as you can see, the response is like Shakespeare. Combining system and user roles can yield interesting outcomes. So let's define a function get response, which takes an input prompt and an optional model argument defaulting to GPT 3.5 Turbo and returns the response from the chat completions API. So here is the function which I am defining. And now we can start experimenting with a few prompts. So let's start with very simple prompt. So what we are going to do is we are going to write a prompt over here and then print the response which we are getting from the prompt. Our system is set up in a way where we can continue this uh, iteratively and see what is the outcome of these prompts. So the first prompt which I would want to give is, let's say that I wanted to write a blog 
post on decision tree. So, what I am asking it to do is write an article on a technical topic and let us go ahead and see what it does. Right. So, now it has written an entire blog post on decision tree. But this looks like a little bit on the higher side. So, let me now change the prompt. So, I will just copy the same command, but I will change that prompt to write a short blog post on decision tree and I will explicitly say limiting to 500 words. So, I have now specified a limit that it should restrict it to 500 words. Let us see the outcome. So, as you can see, it has given me the outcome. However, this looks very technical and let us say if I was writing this blog post for beginner audience who wants to build their career in data science, this would look extremely difficult. So, let us go ahead and see if it can simplify that. So, this time what I would say is write a blog post on decision tree, but I will specify for beginner level audience who are starting their career in data science and I will say limit the blog post to 500 words. So, this time I have also limited the number of words and asked it to make it more beginner friendly. Let us see what it does. So, now as you can see, it has broken down the entire article into different sections. So, I can see a section for introduction, understanding decision tree, its advantages, how to build a decision tree and then the conclusion. So, it has made it simpler, it has made it more sharper and, and the outcome is far better than what probably let us say uh, we were getting earlier. So, now let us see if we can make it even better. So, let us assume that I want to actually add a few more sections. So, what I will do is I will ask it to actually add a few more sections like uh, uh, let us say the learning objectives of the blog post. So, I will change the prompt. So, this is the new prompt which I will give, which is essentially write a blog post on decision tree for beginner level audience, but I have specified that it should include introduction, learning objectives, table of contents and the working and conclusion. So, let us go ahead and print it. Great. So, now you can see it has given very clear learning objectives along with table of contents and obviously the rest of the article. And this looks like something which can be published. However, in order to publish an article, it should also be SEO friendly or what it essentially means is how discoverable is this article to various search engines. And in order to do that, it needs to follow a structure which the search engines can understand or the bots which are working for the search engines can understand. So, what I will do is I will just add another prompt saying write a SEO friendly blog post on decision tree and rest of the uh, prompt remains the same. And let us go ahead and run this. So, this time the output which will come would actually be lot more friendly to the SEO bots which are running which scan the article so that my article actually comes more frequently in the searches. So, this is now the final article which can be taken and be published. However, what I see is that we are actually missing the FAQ section. Now, every article on analytics with there comes with a few FAQs. So, what I want is that chat GPT should also give me these FAQs. 
So let me go ahead and ask it to create or include 10 FAQs for the above blog post along with the answers. And let's see if it can do it. So now when I look at the outcome, what I see is that it has actually created 10 questions and they follow a structure which can be very easily seen. So question and answer. However, these do not look related to what we were writing. So the context got missed. However, the model understood what a FAQ is and the structure in which it could come. But it has lost the context which was there in the blog article which we had created. Any ideas why this happened? Well, the reason is that the each API call which we make to ChatGPT is actually independent. And hence, it did not store the history which was there in the previous conversation. 